Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, it's Beatrice, Frankie Two Socks and Patek with your early morning beach walk. This is a cock in track. I'm gonna get the whole, take the whole day to get onto the beach with these views popping up. Yes, we are on the boardwalk. It's just after 22.5 and it's beautiful here. Yeah. Already hot. The Sakaida beetles is mocking us here today. Shouting the pleasure of us being to, going to be cooked. I know, block some moor. This is the tidal channel at the boardwalk. There's no tide at the moment, so there's no water. It's going towards low tide, or it is low tide. Don't know. We'll see when we get on the beach. And there's our spooky spook lane. Blair Witch Project. Come here. Come. Pitch to. Sarah and pitch to. Come. This is now a new game. Yeah, come now. I can't wait for you. Come, Frank is on the other side. Come. We've been monitoring the sediment buildup here on this tree over the last couple of weeks here on this St. Lucia Estuary Beach. The sediment movement here on the beach is quite severe. We've seen the increase between the boardwalk and the shoreline, decrease between the boardwalk and the shoreline over the last couple of months. Yes, the flooding on Falozi does bring nutrients and minerals to the ocean, which the phytoplankton needs to live from. Contrary to popular belief, the ocean is the lungs of the earth, and not so much the rainforest. For the planet to survive, the ocean needs nutrients, minerals, everything that's washed down from the mountains into the ocean. So the muddy oceans we need to feed the phytoplankton. Phytoplankton is a very unique organism that the planet cannot live without. Now, 
lot of people making observations that there's li less living creatures now that the Flazi River is flowing back into the ocean. Firstly, we've got nowhere to put the Flazi River water. It has to come to the ocean. Secondly, the Flazi was cut off from the ocean for so many years that the damage is now only come, becoming prevalent. The river born sediment has made a huge change here to the layout of the beaches at St. Lucia Estuary. There's no more gullies, it's one flat beach from the south of to the north at first rocks. This nutrient filled sediment coming from the Mfulazi River brings life all along the beach for many filter feeders like the mussels, oysters, crabs. Palan Bay is the second highest vegetated sand dune in the world and it's 100% wind blown. Ocean born and river born sediment. Blown up against the hill by the wind. Moderately strong north westerly blowing here on the beach. Sand is nice and hard, although it's almost knee tight. Low tide has pulled back a lot. And then there's that storm brooding in. Uh, northeast of Madagascar. Hasn't got a name yet, it's just a tropical storm with a number. Such a perfect day here on St. Lucia beaches. The birds feeding in the shallow water. Beautiful sunrise. A happy beach. Hey beach, are you happy on the beach? Huh? These protected gullies does have bull sharks feeding in them, but it brings the mullet, the sprat fish, and all the other bait fish much closer inshore so that the predators can come and hunt where we, as the rock and surf anglers, can catch them. She saw her Frankie. She saw him Frank and now she's frantic. Combined with the outflow of the Velozi River, we need a functional estuary mouth. Currently we don't have that. We only have an open estuary mouth as long as the Velozi River floods into the ocean. This is the reason why they decided in 1942 to separate the St. Lucia Estuary Mouth and the Inflosi River Mouth. We cannot deny our existence as human race on the planet. Either you have got the religious belief that you were put here, or you have got a evolution belief that nature created you to be here, to be part of the system, the functional system. Either way, we've got a responsibility to manage our human impact on the planet. Before this man-made dam wall, the estuary on a closed cycle just leaked out to the ocean. The sand retention wasn't enough to keep the water from flowing into the ocean.
just shows you how soft and full of water the sand is. Wiseman came here yesterday with a tractor to evaluate the, the area as a launching site and he almost got stuck. What is sad about the 2012 management plan is that there was no follow-up after this dam wall. There was no plan what to do after they've sealed the system off from the ocean. Jy wil nou net wees so diep as die dief dat die krokodilie kan wegkry. It turned out that the short-sightedness of the scientists that planned the dam wall didn't include the bentonite that washes down with the Mflozi River and the density of the bentonite that's going to form here. Their plan, but they didn't calculate it. For us to have a working history, we have to mitigate the human impact of in the catchment areas of the Mflozi River. Although this might is a natural downflow from volcanic rock breaking down from the upper catchment areas of the Mflozi River. It is in abundance, not known to nature. This is due to soil erosion in the catchment areas high in the mountains where the Mflozi River and other rivers meet. Nothing yet. the formation of the basin that the estuary lies in and the lake system lies in we cannot dredge ever again. We have to use low impact agitation of the mud so the mud and the minerals and nutrients it carries with it can wash into the ocean and feed the phytoplankton. Gee, I almost forgot about you guys. Sorry, man. This is the northern channel or the robbed channel and it's not closing up yet. For some reason the tide is keeping it healthy. The threat that the riverborne sediment washes down into the ocean of clogging up the fragile ecosystem of the estuary. We've got the threat of a windborne sediment that is blown towards the estuary basin. Guys, this is a call to action to help Berner Philipson, our local freelance skipper, photographer, tour guide. He hurt his knee while jumping off the boat in the parking area um, just before December. He now needs an operation and he cannot carry, carry all the uh, expenses by himself. So the Queens of the Ocean Angling Competition has started the fundraising to help him to pay for the medical bill. Um, I'll publish the de detail in the link below. So, um, guys, you, we all know Berno. We all know the good work he's been doing here in St. Lucia as a first responder, as a skipper, tour guide, photographer. Lockdown left us, all of us, a little bit on our knees. So let's help Berno out. Link to the... Uh, below in the description. Thank you. We have to cross this desert to get to our vehicle. These wind blown sand dunes are mig migrating to the south, right into the estuary basin. We've, we've got predominantly Northeasterly winds like now, it happens faster. And they are migrating westward as well. And you can see that the grass has already established itself on the westward side of the dune. So this is a permanent fixture. Estuary Basin is in grave danger. This is also not a very natural grass for the area, but anyway, it's now a hard surface. And the estuary basin which lies to the south we are panning across now to show you the vast area that has now been overrun with reeds sand and grass 
that's supposed to be the spawning and nursery grounds of a healthy ecosystem. Jay, come. Ja, and Frank will not come, we're going to go away. As soon as windblown sand has established itself with grass, the next pioneer species to take over is the Kaisia Karua and all the vegetation that follows it on the coastal dune forests. So no, this sand will never shift again. This is now a permanent fixture. This wetlands has been lost and this estuary basin, we are busy losing it because of our indecisive actions. The marsh hibiscus along the boardwalk shows us that it used to be a wetlands. We can look amongst the reeds of the marsh hibiscus. There's no more wetlands. It's now becoming sand dunes. The tidal channel used to drain into and out of a wetland system that runs north from the estuary basin. That's where the hippos used to have babies. Although coastal deal forests is part of the system and they are needed to host a variety of bird species, animal life and plant life, we are losing wetlands at the rapid rate. This is 20 years of Acacia Karua growth. 20 years ago this was a parking area, no, a little bit more, 1984. This was a parking area in a wetland system. And now it's overrun by Acacia Karua and Mars Hibiscus. This thing moved me a knop on the head this morning. Lekker, ne? Lekker. Bully. Come, Pardit.